and moms. Thank you for joining us. I'm Abby joining you from State College, Pennsylvania. I'm Stacy signing in from Michigan. And hi everyone. I'm Casey coming at you from Cincinnati, Ohio. Hello, I'm Cheesy Anderson and I am here in Arizona. <laughs> Welcome everybody. All right guys. So I think it's the fifth week, right? Does everybody agree with me? I think it is. I think I'm so lose count a little bit, but I think it's the fifth week and we are reading on the life of Gladys Aylward. If you are just joining us, Gladys Aylward was a missionary to China in 19, like the 1930s. Okay. So we are going to be heading into chapter seven, I think today, but let's talk a little bit about what happened last week. All right. So last time we read I had skipped a couple things and then we were going into her trying to get to Mrs. Lawson. Mrs. Lawson is the lady that Gladys Aylward is hoping she can help when she gets to China. They've never met before and she wrote a letter back and forth a couple times and that's it. That's all. She's been heading over to China and it's been the most complicated trip. So I'm just going to quick recap and then... Um, you guys, Casey, Stacy, Abby, tell me what you think about what happened last week. But she was traveling and traveling. She's gone by boat, by train, by bus, super bumpy bus. And then she ended up going by donkey in a basket on a donkey on these really narrow, freaky trails going up a mountain. And everywhere she goes, she gets to a city and she's like, does Mrs. Lawson live here? And the answer is always like, oh, no. She doesn't live here, but she lives, and they point her to the next location. So all she did was travel until she met her at the very end of our chapter, right before we stopped reading last week. She finally saw Mrs. Lawson with her own eyes. What do you guys think about that? I think I was expecting Mrs. Lawson to be a little bit kinder when they finally met, but she was super rushed and um, like frantic trying to get her inside. Mm -hmm. That's right. I think I was just like stuck on the journey. It sounds horrific, like <laughs> fleas and ticks and bricks and oh my. So yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I think that all of it was pretty um, crazy, but throughout the whole thing, again and again, I'm just like, how is she still going? Like, she's sleeping on this on this brick floor with a bunch of strangers and riding donkeys to unknown locations again and again, and she's. <laughs> still going and still persistent. And I think that it's super cool how mm -hmm. she just, she knows her mission and she's on it. Yes, yes. That we'll be talking a little bit more about that today, about being like on mission, man, because she just does not give up. Sometimes you turn the page and you're like, please get there. Please let it be the good time. Please let it be a happy corner that she's turning. And it's always just a little bit harder than she thought. So anyway, so yeah, we'll be jumping back into that in just a few minutes. <laughs> cool, I'm excited. I want to see what happens. I can't wait. Um, but we want to remind you girls before we do that to have your mom take a picture of you hanging out with us during our True Girl Live electives and then have her post it on Facebook or Instagram and tag us so we can see it because we want to feature one each day. Mm -hmm. And it'll kind of look like this. Check this out. This was sent to us by Sarah. It's Bethany. She's so cute. Yes, you can tell she's smiling because of her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> And the message, we also want to hear the things that you girls are doing, how God is um, kind of prompting you to help in this time. So her mom sent in this message. She said, my sweet Bethany has brought so much joy as we stay home together. She dressed up as her, doc as her doctor daddy for a virtual hero spirit day. She wrote encouraging chalk messages on our neighborhood sidewalk. She takes every opportunity to bake and help me cook. She used her 3D printer to make an ear 
ear reliever for nurses that wear masks. She bought slash adopted a dog and has faithfully taken responsibility. Man, Bethany is busy. Like, that's cool. That is so good. Cool. Way so we go. want to hear what you girls are doing in this time. So keep sending those pictures in so we can feature one each day. And some other things we want to hear from you girls are your freedom stories. Now, if you don't know by now, I'm going to tell you. Um, we have a really important verse in our ministry, and it's John 8, 31 and 32. that says, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Spending time in God's word gives us freedom. And we've been feeling so blessed to hear the truth that you guys have been finding in the Bible recently, and we want to keep hearing them. So one of our freedom stories comes from Janae, and I'm going to read that to you guys now. She says, a few weeks ago, I was having lots of trouble sleeping because I was always worrying about what was happening with the coronavirus. I would lie awake for hours at a time, just worrying about what was going on around me. One night I was lying alone in my bed and I had been trying to sleep for almost four hours, but I couldn't because of all the worry clouding my mind. Then it was almost like someone was telling me to open up my Bible. When I did, the verse I opened up to was John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. After that, I felt a weight lifted off my shoulders and I felt calm and peaceful. And now every time I feel worried or scared, I remember what Jesus did for me. And Janae, I just want to say I can totally relate to that. Last week, actually, I was having the same problem. I was like not sleeping through the night. Mm. I was just like, it was the worst. Hey, I know I and um, I just want to commend you. I hope you're watching. I want to commend you for knowing that during those times when you feel like, oh, I can't, like, this is out of my control. I can't sleep. Like, you ran to your Bible. And that's an excellent thing and an admirable thing and something that you should continue to do all your life. So that's really amazing that you're getting those skills right now um, while you're still young. Um, so that was an amazing freedom story. Thank you so much, Janae. And I'm sure that you guys are also wondering how you can send us your freedom story. So let me tell you, the first thing that you want to do is read your Bible every day, especially during these times where things can feel out of control and crazy. You want to be spending time in the word and spending time praying and just spending time with Jesus. You want to find verses. This is step two. Find verses that help you feel hopeful and peaceful and joyful and like God has stuff in control, even in the middle of this crazy time. And then the third one is you can either comment, but we prefer that you send your freedom story to mytruegirl.com slash live. And there's like a little form in there and it, you send it to us and then we'll choose a few to read every single day. But we really want to continue to hear it because honestly, it's, it's a big encouragement for us too. It's not just... Um, your experience because when you let us into it it's super cool and encouraging for us that you girls are finding the truth and it's setting you free and I want to just say it again every day we pray at the end of our time and you can begin to put your prayer requests in either the YouTube uh, comments or, or the Facebook comments and we'll read through them and choose a few to pray for at the end of the day now guess what time it is time to read <laughs> it is book time uh, so this is great i'm i'm excited and hoping things look up a little bit so this will be um we'll be reading chapter seven i think some of you may have the book and if you do happen to have the book and you are like reading along then i have something to say to you if you don't have the book yet or you've read it before you will notice that in chapter seven, there is a particular uh, incident. It's a little bit strong, violently. And so I am going to just move right over it. It's, it's a really um, pivotal part because in it, Gladys sees something that really upsets her and she is feeling like there's no way she can minister to people anymore. Like how in the world should she share the gospel? And uh, you know, Mrs. Lawson isn't like, oh, you poor, poor thing. She kind of comes back a little harshly, but what she's saying is the truth. Like you need to figure out how 
uh, Jesus wants you to share the gospel anyway. Just because you're in a place where people do things you don't understand doesn't mean it's time for you to run away. So that part is really interesting, but I'm going to skip over it a little bit just because we may have little brothers and sisters listening. So I'm just going to slide right over that part and the story should move on pretty seamlessly. But I wanted to give you a verbal overview of what would be happening in that like two pages that I'm going to skip. And now we begin in chapter seven. The title is The Inn of Eight Happinesses. Mrs. Lawson led Gladys across the courtyard, down a passage and into a large room. There was a kang along one wall and several wooden boxes fashioned into a table and chairs were along the other. Mrs. Lawson motioned for Gladys to sit down and called out something in Chinese. In response, an old Chinese man bustled into the room. Mrs. Lawson introduced him to Gladys as Yang, the cook. Yang smiled a toothless smile at Gladys and then listened to the instructions Mrs. Lawson gave him in Chinese. When she had finished, Yang bowed and left the room. Mrs. Lawson explained that she had rented the big house for two years. The people of Yang Cheng thought it was haunted and no one had been in it for years. Of course, being haunted meant she had been able to rent it very cheaply. Gladys smiled as best she could, but the place was nothing at all like the homey, comfortable house she'd imagined. And Mrs. Lawson wasn't the sweet old lady she'd expected. Mrs. Lawson barked out questions and then didn't bother to wait for a reply. Gladys was wishing Mrs. Lawson were more like Mrs. Smith in Se Chow, when Yang reappeared with a steaming bowl of noodles and vegetables, Gladys gulped the soup down. In her excitement to get to Yang Cheng, she'd forgotten just how hungry she was. After enjoying two bowls of soup, she cleared her throat. <clears throat> Where would you like me to put my things and sleep tonight? She asked. Ooh, anywhere you can find, I don't care. One room is as messy as the next and none of them have doors, Mrs. Lawson replied. Gladys picked up her bags and wandered around the house. The rooms on the second floor had balconies that overlooked the courtyard below, although the view wasn't scenic. In the end, Gladys settled on a downstairs room that had more junk in it than most of the other rooms, but didn't smell as bad. After choosing a room and putting her bags away, Gladys decided to stretch her legs and take a short walk around her new neighborhood. She slipped through the gateway and out into the narrow street where the muleteer had let her off less than an hour before. Farther down the street, a group of women carrying water jars stopped to stare at Gladys, who waved to them. Suddenly, without even talking to one another, each of the women put down her jar, picked up clods of mud and dirt, and hurled them at Gladys. Some little children ran from a nearby courtyard and giggled with delight at what was happening. Gladys turned and fled, clods of mud thudding against the back of her pants as she ran. Once she was safely inside the courtyard of Mrs. Lawson's house, she burst into tears. Mrs. Lawson came out to see what the commotion was and instructed Gladys to come inside. It would not do to have her crying where people could see. What's the matter? She asked once they were inside. It's, it's the people out there, sobbed Gladys as she wiped clumps of mud from her pants. The women threw mud at me and, and the children laughed at me. How will I ever tell them about the gospel message if they won't let me come near them? Mrs. Lawson frowned a little. Getting upset about it won't help. Though I must admit, in all my 53 years in China, I've never seen a less friendly group than the people of Yang Cheng. But you're so lucky, she went on. You have black hair and brown eyes like they do. Imagine how they fear me with my white hair and blue eyes. Gladys nodded. She hadn't thought about how it must be for Mrs. Lawson. The hair of older Chinese people sometimes went a little gray, but never snow white like Mrs. Lawson's. They call us Lao Yang Kwai, foreign devil, but we must get used to that. Think of it as a challenge. We have to work out some way to reach these people with the gospel message. God has given us a difficult task. 
said Mrs. Lawson, then adding briskly, but not an impossible task. Gladys wiped her eyes. It was a challenge she wasn't sure she was up to, but she would try her best to keep going. The week began to roll by. For Gladys, the time was filled with cleaning up the house and having language lessons with Yang, who was teaching her the local Yang Cheng dialect of Chinese. Yang was a very patient tutor, and Gladys spent a lot of time in the kitchen with him. Most evenings, she would also take a stroll with Mrs. Lawson. Gradually, the people of Yang Cheng began to accept the sight of the two foreign women. The women were still jeered at and sometimes spat on, but after several weeks, the mud throwing stopped. About this time, Gladys began to doubt whether they would ever be able to find a way to talk meaningfully with the townspeople. Even though the two of them were now tolerated, no one was interested in attending a Bible study or any other such activity the women offered. Something had to change, but neither woman was sure what it was, that is, until they went for one of their late afternoon walks together. Gladys loved to look out over the city wall and watch the last few straggling mule trains wind their way up to the village. She'd already decided that one day she would go to the end of the trail and back with a mule train. Oh, just think of the possibilities, she said, unaware that she was thinking out loud. Of what? asked Mrs. Lawson. Of traveling with a mule train, she said dreamily. All those little towns like Yang Cheng, where they stop each night, if a muleteer were a Christian, he could spread the gospel message to so many people who have never heard it before. It would be so effortless. Mrs. Lawson grabbed Gladys's arm and swung her around so they faced each other. That's it. That's it. Why well, didn't I see it before? She said excitedly. See what? Asked Gladys, not following the conversation. We'll turn this house into an inn, exclaimed Mrs. Lawson. Gladys wasn't used to seeing Mrs. Lawson excited about anything. An inn, she echoed. Yes, it's the perfect answer. We can't get the people into a church, but we can get them into an inn, especially if it's the cleanest inn on the whole trail. Gladys nodded, thinking back on her own mule trip. She would like to have stayed at an inn without lice and fleas. But we didn't come to be innkeepers, did we? She said. A little unsure of what exactly Mrs. Lawson had in mind for them. Don't you see it? Mrs. Lawson was becoming a little impatient. We get the muleteers in, we water the mules, feed the men a good meal, and then offer them something no other inn does. She pursed her lips for a moment, apparently waiting for Gladys to appreciate the full impact of what she was about to say. Then I tell them Bible stories for free. They'll love it. All Chinese people love entertainment. Noah, Moses, Jesus, Paul, they'll love the stories. And you mark my words, those stories will be told and retold all along the trail. Only God knows how many people could hear about the gospel as a result of our inn. Mrs. Lawson stopped and folded her hands. Gladys was surprised. Mrs. Lawson spoke as though the inn were already up and running and not an old leaky house with broken windows, missing doors, and no coal for the Kang. Still, as Gladys looked back down at the last mule train hurrying to reach Yang Cheng before the sun disappeared completely, a thrill came over her. This was a project she could throw herself into. The next few weeks were busy and happy ones for Gladys and Mrs. Lawson as they worked together, turning the house into an inn. There was repair work to be done, millet and vegetables to be purchased, coal to be ordered, and the courtyard made into a mule stable. Thankfully, Mrs. Lawson had a small income that provided enough money to make the repairs and buy the provisions. The women calculated that when the inn was running, it would pay for itself and provide enough money to pay Yang while leaving a small amount for extras. All the inns along the trail had rather grand sounding names and Gladys and Mrs. Lawson decided that their inn needed a grand name as well. So they called it the Inn of Eight Happinesses. The name had no special meaning. Mrs. Lawson just liked the sound of it. The Inn of Eight Happinesses quickly took shape. 
As she worked away, Gladys wondered what she would be responsible for once it opened. Yang would be preparing the meals and serving them to the muleteers. Mrs. Lawson would be telling Bible stories after the meal and keeping track of the finances. That left one other responsibility, the mules. Someone had to take care of them. The mules needed to have the mud scraped off of their legs and be fed and watered each night. Gladys had a suspicion that she would be that someone. Sure enough, she was. She also had one other job. Somehow she had to get the muleteers into the inn. Muyo bi, muyo gutso, how, 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 lie, lie, lie. Gladys said the words over and over to herself a hundred times to make sure she remembered them. Yang told her the words meant, we have no bugs, we have no fleas, good, 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 come, come, come. But as many times as Gladys repeated the words to herself, she still couldn't imagine actually standing in the street, yelling them to the muleteers. But then neither could she see herself scraping the mud off the mules. She'd never cared for an animal bigger than a cat. Still, she told herself, if the muleteers were inside the Inn of Eight Happinesses, listening to Bible stories, she would do her best in the stable to keep the mules happy. Gladys stood and shouted until she was hoarse the first night the inn was open, but nothing happened. Not a single muleteer stopped for the night. When the last mule train had passed by, Gladys walked back inside. The inn looked so beautiful. The table was set and ready for the bowls of delicious noodle soup Yang had made. Mrs. Lawson's Bible lay open on her chair, ready for her to tell stories after dinner. The kang had been scrubbed and the warm fire was radiating from under it. Gladys stood in the doorway and shook her head. I'm sorry, she offered. No matter what I did, the muleteers wouldn't stop. Tomorrow, you'll have to make them come in, said Mrs. Lawson firmly. Make them? Gladys quizzed. I did everything I could. Well, not exactly. Tomorrow, you'll have to grab the mules by the bridle and pull them in. Once they're in the courtyard, nothing on earth will move them. Mrs. Lawson spoke with such finality that Gladys didn't argue. All the next day. Gladys worried about getting the muleteers to stop. She discussed it with Yang in limited Yang Chang dialect, of course, since he spoke no English. And by the time the sun began to set, she felt ready to try again. Gladys stood in the shadows outside the inn as the mule trains passed by. She let the first two go past as she got up her courage. And when she heard the steady clip-clop of the third mule train, she waited silently for the lead mule to come level with her hiding place. At what she thought was the right moment, she leaped from her hiding place and reached for the mule's bridle. However, she'd misjudged her timing and ended up reaching for the head muleteer instead. He screamed with surprise. Ah! The other five muleteers scattered into the shadows, but the head muleteer couldn't flee because the reins were tightly wound around his hand. Gladys knew she had to lead the mules into the courtyard and fast before the muleteer realized what she was doing. She rushed to the lead mule and she stood in front of him. The mule lowered his head and pushed it into her stomach. He lifted Gladys high into the air and bolted into the courtyard. Mrs. Lawson and Yang arrived at the doorway just in time to see the mule dump Gladys onto the cobblestones. Well done, Gladys! congratulated Mrs. Lawson, looking at the mule train standing in the courtyard. However you did it doesn't matter now. We have our first guest, <laughs> but not for long. The head muleteer took one look at Mrs. Lawson with her white hair, unwound the reins from his hand and fled through the gate. What do we do now? Asked Gladys, picking herself up off the cobblestones. Mrs. Lawson spoke to Yang. They talked much too fast for Gladys to understand what they were saying. Then she turned and said, Yang says not to worry. This is a good start. The mules and their loads are worth far too much money to abandon. Yang will go and find the muleteers. They'll come back with him. They have to. We have their mules. Yang will tell them they're safe staying here. They'll quickly find out we're nothing to be scared of. Gladys nodded. It was all turning out to be so much more complicated than she'd imagined it would be. She hoped that after tonight, 
things would get a little easier, but she had no idea of the problems that lay ahead. We have a few more minutes left to read, so I'm going to dip into chapter eight. Jesus in the Ark. <laughs> and then, continued Yang in his most dramatic voice, Jesus opened the door and let all the animals in two by two. Gladys frowned. She'd just come in from brushing down the mules and had stopped to listen to Yang tell a Bible story to the muleteers. After 40 long, long days and 40 long, long nights, the sun began to shine and Jesus looked out the window. He saw the star of Bethlehem rising in the east. Gladys had heard enough. She went in search of Mrs. Lawson, finding her in her bedroom. Gladys knocked on the side of the open door. May I come in? She asked. Certainly, replied Mrs. Lawson. What is it? Gladys shook her head. Perhaps I don't understand enough of the Yang Chang dialect, but I thought I just heard Yang tell a story about Jesus being on Noah's Ark. <laughs> Mrs. Lawson looked weary. I'm sure you heard it correctly, she sighed. Last week, Yang told the muleteers all about St. Paul parting the Red Sea. The muleteers are begging for Bible stories, and if I'm not there every minute of every night, Yang can't resist stepping in and telling his own versions of the stories for me. Gladys nodded. Ever since Yang had become a Christian a month before, he'd been eager to share his new faith with the muleteers. Still, we mustn't complain. Mrs. Lawson added with surprising optimism, Yang is doing his best and the inn is going much better than I ever thought it would. Gladys nodded again. It had been five months since the Inn of Eight Happinesses had opened. At first, she had to drag each mule train into the courtyard, but now the new innkeepers had made friends with many of the muleteers, and most nights at the inn, the Kang overflowed with sleeping bodies, sometimes up to 50 or more. Gladys wished she could speak better Chinese. If she could speak the language better, she could help Mrs. Lawson by telling the Bible stories herself. She decided to spend an extra hour each night learning to tell Bible stories in the Yang Cheng dialect. Within a few weeks, Gladys thought she would know enough to start telling some simple stories. But Gladys didn't have a few weeks. She didn't have even one week in which to learn the Yang Cheng dialect. Three nights later, as Gladys sat on a soapbox in her room learning some new Chinese words from her notebook, Mrs. Lawson came in and told her it was time for their walk together. Gladys had been behind in her schedule all day. The millet merchant had wanted to talk about the gospel. The woman next door was sick and Gladys had visited her. She had also spent longer than intended writing a letter to her parents in London. As a result, Gladys had decided to not go on their usual walk that night. Very politely, she told Mrs. Lawson she couldn't take a walk with her because she needed to spend more time concentrating on language study. And that is where we are going to stop today, partway through chapter eight. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was good. Oh my goodness. I, like... oh. I know. Sorry, I left it on a cliffhanger as usual. I was trying to see, she's about to go on a walk with Mrs. Lawson and next week we're gonna see what happens, but there's so much going on there, so much that she's doing that has never been done before for her. And um, I was thinking through it and I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta think what verse, and I was looking for it. It was the verse where Paul talks about um, whoever he needs to help hear the gospel, whoever needs to listen to him, he tries to be what that person or those people need. Does that make sense? So it's a whole list. He talks about the people that only go by the law. He um, shows himself as lawful and he speaks to them through the law. The people who think there should be no law, he speaks to them from outside the law. The people who are rich, he talks to the people who are poor, he talks to and the people who are weak, he talks to and he behaves um, the way they need to behave, the way they need to uh, see to listen best. So I was looking and looking for that and I found it in first Corinthians. I think um, that verse is going to pop up on your screen. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, yeah, there it is. Thank 
you know me, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 22 uh, to 23. I started from B because in the beginning of 22, it says, to the weak, I show myself weak. And um, so I just wanted to read this to you, okay? So here's the verse. I have become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I may share with them in its blessings. First Corinthians 9, 22b to 23. And that verse, I feel like that totally reminds me of what Gladys Aylward is doing. She came to help Mrs. Lawson. Maybe she was hoping she would be um, like a sweet, she was hoping she was a sweet, warm, loving woman. And she maybe would help her. Maybe they'd help translate the Bible together. I don't know what she was imagining. Warm nights, um, learning Chinese, you speak, I speak. That's not what happened. Um, she expected the women when she waved, you know, like, hi, I'm Gladys. And they're like, put down the jar, grab clumps of mud and whip it at her. She's like, what? And not only that, then the children come out and they're all like, <laughs> you know, like, oh my goodness, they're throwing mud. Look at the mud stick on her. Look at the lady run, you know, like how embarrassing is that? So she's crying and, and um, upset. And then at the end of it, right, you know, in chapter seven there, she's like, we're not innkeepers. Why would we run an inn? I came here to preach the gospel and now we're going to run an inn. And then when they decide, okay, we're doing the inn, she's like, I wonder what my job is going to be. Oh, mule cleaning. Nice. <laughs> mule feeding and watering and dragging in the people and the mules. So I think that each time she gets up to something that is scary for her, new for her, uncomfortable for her, yucky for her, she thinks, I am sharing the gospel. I'm here to share the gospel. And each time she would pray through it, you can see that her heart would change because she kept her goal in mind. And then she would be like, if this is the way the Lord wants me to share the gospel, I will be this way. I will handle the, um, the rude clods of mud. I will become an innkeeper. I will handle cranky Mrs. Lawson. I will clean the mules. And it's just a really great reminder to me that we should, um, by the grace of God, strive to be all things to all people. In other words, by Jesus' love, do whatever we need to do that's in front of us so that we can help bring the love of Jesus to the people who are near us. So anyway, that's what I thought. I'm super proud of her for that part. And uh, yeah, thank you all for listening this week, chapter seven and part of chapter eight. Yep. Cool beans. We can't next, wait till the next one. I know I can't. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> um, okay, girls, now we're going to switch over into our time of prayer. So we've been pulling your requests from the comments like we always do. But like we always say, please know that if we do not um, mention your request during this time, it does not mean that we didn't see it or that we're not praying for it personally or as a ministry. We just um, chose a couple with the time that we have, but we see all of them. So First thing is from Sarah. She said her grandma passed away. So just pray for her. So we'll definitely lift her up in prayer. Um, then Willow said, I have a praise. Last night I was thinking about how this has been a time that God has given me peace. That's really good. We'll praise him for that. Then Karen said, please pray for my three new bottle babies. Oh, her goats. Hey, I think she was on like last week. She was talking about those goats, I think, or someone was talking about some goats, but we'll pray for that. Um, and then someone said, my neighbor moved to Kansas. So could you pray that someone else will move next door so I will have someone to play with after our stay home order? Definitely. And the Muir, oh, that's a hard name. Muir family said, Pray for my mom. She is pregnant and her due date is tomorrow. She is super stressed about all the complications with the hospital stuff. That's so exciting. It's exciting, but I see how it can be scary in this time. So we'll definitely pray for that too. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, God, we just come to you just first thanking you that you've um, allowed us to still kind of have a community with technology, Lord. I thank you that you've given us um, each other just to be able to uplift one another and to just share your peace and your truth that you're showing to each of us individually, Lord. I just thank you so much for connecting us in that way during this time. Um, we wanna lift up just a few of these prayer requests, Lord. We know that there are many and that you know them all and you hear them all. But I wanna pray um, specifically right now for Sarah who um, lost her grandma recently. I just pray that you would just give her peace in this time, Lord. I pray that she would um that she just knows you and that she knows that she can trust 
that um, you will work this out for her good, Lord. We know that some things are hard and they just don't make sense to us, but you see the whole picture and you have a plan. So I just pray that you would just help her to trust you and that you would just comfort her and really hold her heart and give her peace during this time as she does trust you, Lord. And we also wanna thank you for um, the work that you're doing in Willow's life. Um, I thank you that you've brought to her mind the peace that you've given her during this time and that she um, even recognizes how she should be grateful for that and that she is grateful. So I just thank you for being so present to her during this time and I pray that you would continue to be there for her, Lord, as we know you promised. And Lord, I pray for Karen and her um, her bottle baby goats. I just pray that you would keep them healthy, Lord. I pray that this is a fun thing for the family to have during this time and that they're just um, bonding with the goats and having a good time. And I just pray that they would grow up to be strong and healthy goats, Lord. And I pray um, for Chad's family who said that their neighbor moved to Kansas and they just really want someone to move in next door that they can connect with, Lord, and just um, have a new friendship with. So I pray that you would just... Um, be all over that even now if anyone's even looking at that house I pray that you would just bring someone great there Lord and um, just allow them to connect after all of this is over and have them to uh, just have a really good friendship and a good relationship and just fun times in the future Lord and I pray for um, the family whose mom is pregnant and who is getting ready to deliver tomorrow. I pray that you would just be with that delivery, help it to be smooth and just to be an exciting time, Lord. I pray that you would um, just protect them and keep them healthy, keep the mom healthy as she goes into the hospital, Lord. And I just pray that this would um, just be a great refresher and a great relief during this um, kind of crazy time and that they would just find joy and just excitement in this and that, um, it would just be a really good thing for them right now. We love you and we just thank you for being so present in our lives. We thank you for just um, guiding us towards you in new ways, Lord, and just revealing yourself in new ways. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Stacy. All right. So girls, stop what you're doing right now. I have an announcement that you really need to hear. It's very important. So we want you girls to be the talent of this music video we're making. Now, you don't actually have to sing. You just have to lip sync it. We're going to leave the singing to the professionals. Listen, you might be a professional, but we're just going to lip sync it for the sake of everybody else. Because this competition is about learning the lyrics to the song Crazy. Okay, so if you learn the lyrics to that song, we want you to shoot a video singing to the song crazy our true girl song crazy with a hairbrush your craziest hair a really cute crazy outfit whatever you think says true girl plus crazy equals this video for you that's what we want to see <laughs> then you can enter the grand prize so the details are going to be at the link that's posted in the description and comments on our YouTube page. So someone should be setting that up right now. But just, we want you to make a music video with your hairbrush microphone, lip syncing the words to our True Girl song, Crazy. Send it in and you could possibly win, what is it, like $250 worth of True Girl goodies. Guys, I might enter this competition. That sounds so great. <laughs> <laughs> and we want you guys to know that even if you don't want to enter the competition even if you're a little shy and you're like no nah, i'm cool still sign up and attend the um attend the crazy hair event we want to make sure you guys know that it's happening may 1st from 7 p.m to 8 30 p.m eastern standard time so you want to go to mytruegirl.com slash crazy hair and register for that because it's going to be a ball. We had fun at the last one. I know we'll have fun at this one. And we want you to be there. So make sure you do it, okay? It's going to be so fun. Right? It's going to be a ball. We can't lie, guys. We, I mean, we could lie, but we can't lie. <laughs> right hand in the air. I would never. <laughs> right? Okay. So, and then we want to tell you guys that um, we got arts and crafts tomorrow. And we want to post the slide to show you what you need. Now, don't trip out. We know it's a lot of things on this slide. It should be coming up in a second. There we go. It's a lot of things here, but we made sure there are things that you should have at home. Pretty easy things to find. And we're also going to post that list, I think, in our comments as well. But snap a picture, if you can, of this slide really fast, just so you know what you need for tomorrow. Ooh. And then...
We also wanted to tell you guys, if you were tuned into our Tuesday True Girl Live, you know that we had Erin Preparaglu, it's a hard name, I worked really hard to say that, Preparaglu on, and she was the WNBA star. So we got to sit down with her a little more and have a little interview. So that is on YouTube as well. So check it out if you want to know more about her. And our last announcement is for your brothers, actually. So make sure they're like nudge them to make sure they're paying attention because this is specifically for them. Grab your dad and sit on the couch or the chair or the bed or wherever you like to join on Facebook Live. The most comfortable place, preferably. Although I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're like running a marathon today as their activity. But at 7.30 tonight, Born to be Brave is going live on YouTube. Nope, Facebook. Maybe YouTube, but definitely Facebook. So Born to be Brave on Facebook. Join you and your dad as long as you're a boy. Although I've watched some of them and they're kind of gross, but sometimes fun. I mean, they're always fun. So definitely join and it'll be a blast. Thank you guys so much for watching. Abby, you say it. Yeah, you do it. Yay, I'll say it. All right, guys. Wait, does Cheesy want to say it? Oh, yeah, let Cheesy say it. But she really won't see him. But you do it. Yeah, you say it. You say it. I don't know if I'm like worthy of saying You're so worthy. You are. You are. so worthy. All right, here we go. Hey, hey, hey. See you Friday. Bye, girls. We love you. Bye. All the crazy talk I hear on the TV, TV. They wanna